I'm Alex Lan. I am uh, the head of the IVD Notified Body with BSI. And uh, as far as, no as I know, I'm about three years into uh, to my subscription with reps. Uh, but uh, I've uh, visited many conferences before even I was a member of reps. And my name is Siegfried Schmidt. I'm a vice president technical with uh, Paroxel. Uh, I've been involved with RUPS for well over a decade, but mostly in the beginning with the publications. And I'm still very much involved with publications, and that will be one of the things that we will also highlight at the event. And with organizing conferences, uh, certainly for a few years now, and uh, certainly I'm very, very pleased to be now the second year together with Alex, the, the co-chair for, for this Euro Convergence event. It's fantastic. I'm very much excited to get all uh, stakeholders and all people together in one room, especially in Europe, because there is a lot of things happening at the moment. Uh, the MDR um, has enrolled uh, for a year, so we can now look back and how that is going. IVDR has uh, also recently been enrolled. And, um, you know, the reps conversion is very interesting because it brings all of these different peoples from different backgrounds and um, uh, all together in one room and, uh, and really sit down and discuss these. So uh, that is, I think, within regulatory, one of the nicest things you can have. We saw last year how important it was for the public to actually attend a conference in person. That was a great success. And so this year we expect a completely sold out event. Uh, and of course, that's what we're excited about uh, because it really also shows the importance of this particular RAPS event in Europe. In, in, in my area of expertise, uh, the IVDs, um, I, I think uh, I'm really looking forward uh, discussing about the uh, class Ds and how these are uh, made available in Europe and how these are rolled out. Also, um, I think uh, very interesting to see uh, the current status of Udemat and um, how that is, is building. I think there is still a lot to develop and uh, means that there's also a lot to discuss. Yeah, and I think although the pandemic is over, it isn't back to business as usual. A lot of things have changed in the regulatory field. And um, maybe if I can mention just one aspect, then it would be expedited regulatory approvals. I mean, which company wouldn't want to bring their products to market faster? But Seriously, perhaps the thing I am most excited about is the splendid support we are seeing from the regulators. Doesn't matter whether it's the European Commission, the European Medicines Agency, or the various national competent authorities. We expect well over two dozen representatives participating in this event. Now, that I think is outstanding. Yeah, it's uh, in, in addition to this, I think this is an amazing achievement. And uh, uh, as, as I said, there's so much to talk about. Um, we have recently uh, seen the amendment, uh, not only for the IVDs, but also for uh, the medical devices, um, which um, has uh, uh, been in the waiting for, for about a year now. And um, I, I think uh, we will see the fruits of uh, these amendments and, uh, uh, over the next year to come. And that certainly will stir up uh, a very nice conversations among regulators, notified bodies and manufacturers alike. Um, well, uh, I, I think uh, Secret also alluded to this. Uh, there is a lot of uh, things happening uh, in the background. Uh, notified bodies are getting prepared, uh, content authorities are getting prepared. And, um, you know, through the, uh, the normal channels, a lot of people uh, will not see what is actually going on. However, during a conference like RAPS, it is possible 
to have a better understanding of uh, where uh, things actually are, how uh, the European Commission is progressing, how competent authorities are progressing, uh, and how also pharma is progressing. And um, you can only have a, a good understanding of that if you really get into discussion with each other. And uh, one of the nice things I, I, we have noticed also for this year is the amount of panels. We have a lot of panel discussions. And uh, as a result of that, you will also see uh, a, a lot of information uh, that probably uh, you would not see uh, through the regular channels. To add to this, uh, of course, at the conference, you have a device track, you have a pharma track, but there is a lot of overlap. You have all these combination products, for example, yeah? And it's important that we don't just get blinkered and look at to one side only. And these conferences really provide the opportunity to understand a lot more because they really go across the whole field here. Leveraging clinical data is not new. Uh, I think especially in Europe, it's important to understand that um, uh, at this moment, there's still a lot of devices on the market that, uh, you know, based on the medical device directive and the IPD directive. And uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, these devices um, uh, also conform to the new requirements. Um, now, although uh, it, it, it is very clear that a lot of new requirements out there uh, related to clinical evidence, related to performance evidence for IVDs, for instance, there's a still uh, quite a lot of information, also including real world data that uh, manufacturers can take on board when um, uh, demonstrating, uh, you know, the performance and safety of their device. So um, it is not a new topic, but it is certainly very much a topic which is on the radar uh, with all stakeholders. And we mustn't forget that during the pandemic, some products were developed in phenomenally short time and brought to market and saved millions of people's lives. And there is now a certain expectation amongst uh, the patient population that this sort of continues in a way. Uh, of course, the, this is a little bit uh, excessive as an expectation. However, the, the, the way to bring more products faster to market, of course, is always based on data. So to have the discussion about data, where to get them from, what to do with them, and how to benefit the patients in the end, that is a most important aspect here that I see clearly is the perfect thing to discuss during an opening panel. And in addition to this, I think um, a topic that uh, is, 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 I think, very important and still not uh, enough dis um, discussed is the role of post-market surveillance, the, the role of real-world data, especially for the data um, of legacy devices that have been placed on the market. When you take a look at the regulations, both for MDR and IVDR, there are requirements that manufacturers need to obtain data also from their legacy devices during the transitional provisions. And, uh, you know, you can take a lot of that uh, data on board uh, when um, demonstrating conformity to the new regulations. So um, also uh, that is very good to, to discuss and take on board. To be honest, I, I think last year was already very successful because the last year there was the first time that um, uh, you know, reps was again uh, set up for face-to-face -face where people actually could meet each other. And um, also for this year, we, we continued that trend. Um, although uh, I, I think it's good to know that there are alternatives to connect with each other. And I think RAP certainly has uh, conveyed that uh, to, to the extent. At the end of the day, a lot of information is also shared uh, between uh, the presentations in the lobby. Uh, and that is only a thing you can really do if you actually see each other face to face. Yes, and if anything, last year's uh, conference enforced our uh, that we were correct 
to go in person again because that is how it needs to be. We are simply individuals who need the personal interaction to make sure we get the most out of these events. Um, yes, you can watch a video presentation, but that doesn't allow you to have a chat with someone you didn't know you are going to talk to uh, at the coffee, uh, having a glass of wine, whatever. Uh, there are so many more opportunities to uh, enhance your network, to learn more, to share and to, 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 be, be, to be part of this group of people. And that needs to be in person. I think one good tip would be uh, don't try to be too much overwhelmed because uh, you will see a lot of information at the same time. Um, you know, try to cherry pick the best uh, topics and uh, also uh, try to uh, be part of as, as many panels as possible. Uh, I don't want to uh you know give the impression that the presentations and the deep dives are not interesting or not necessary but um uh, panels uh and especially the discussions that arise certainly will help you uh, get a better understanding of the big picture and uh, how all these different regulations converge with each other and uh, as I said before, uh, it's not just about attending and learning. It's also about interactions. So what I would recommend is if you can come early, attend one of the workshops prior to the yeah. start of the conference. And I think importantly, yeah, as I said, not just go to the coffee breaks and uh, make new acquaintances, but come to the social event. There is no better opportunity to meet people and, you know, it's fun too. So that's what I really recommend the newcomers to do.